Zoology students, here are our notes on excretion. So first let's start with the overview. We're going to talk about what is excretion, why waste is a problem for animals, how do less evolved organisms eliminate waste, and then how do the more evolved organisms eliminate waste. Here we go. So excretion is the process where animals or organisms rid themselves of cellular waste products. So now these are products from breaking down our food particles inside of our cells like proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and then what the cell releases. So one of those waste products, remember, was carbon dioxide and water vapor, which is eliminated through our respiratory system. But there are other waste products, and those are cellular waste products that are eliminated through our excretory system. And of course, we still have the digestive waste products. So the food that is undigested or undigestible food that is um, eliminated through our digestive system. So we're not talking about going poop here. Okay, so why is waste a problem for animals and for pretty much any organism? So specifically when an animal eats foods, they break down, um, and more specifically proteins, into toxic nitrogenous waste, so waste that contains nitrogen. And that makes sense if we remember RNA and proteins, that um, proteins are made up of the um, amino acids, which are coded for by the DNA, and they all contain those nitrogen bases. So we produce this nitrogen waste, and that's in the form of ammonia. I have a picture here of ammonia cleaner. It's not exactly the same as what our cells produce, but it's the same um, formula, so we're not producing blue liquid, obviously. But ammonia, the N and the three H's, is actually toxic to animal cells. It creates a, an imbalance in our cells where our cells will start to um, basically just die off if we have too much of this in there. So it needs to be eliminated, it needs to be eliminated quickly, or if we can't eliminate it quickly, we need to convert it to something that's less, less toxic to our cells. So less evolved organisms, and this is, you know, the same as what we've been seeing for feeding and digestion, for circulation, for respiration. A lot of this stuff is done through diffusion. Remember, diffusion is just the process of movement from where there's a lot of it to where there's not a lot of it. So it's a natural flow. It usually doesn't require energy um, to make that happen. So small aquatic animals, because they live in the water, can directly eliminate ammonia right into the water and they don't have a problem. So here's a jellyfish over here. It can just excrete the ammonia waste um, from its cells right into the water and sponges can do the same thing. So here are the cells that would be using that food and then the waste is just excreted right out through that gastrovascular cavity. The more evolved organisms, however, have special excretory systems to convert ammonia into less toxic compounds. We have simple flame cells all the way up to complex kidney structures and we'll go through each one of those a uh, little bit more detail. Okay, so let's start with flame cells. Flame cells are mainly found in flatworms. I'm sure there's some other organisms too, but we're going to focus on the flatworms. They do help maintain water balance. So here's some what flame cells look like. This is a planaria. It's a free living, which means it's not parasitic. Um, flatworm. We can find these in the rock river or in a pond, um, usually close to the edge. Okay. So these flame cells actually help to maintain water balance. So inside of the flame cell, the, there's little cilia that will beat to help um, move the fluid and um, get that ammonia out and then through the pore of the flame cell. And it just comes right out of the body. Okay, so not quite a kidney yet, but it's the start or the basis of what would be a kidney. And we're gonna get rid of excess water because they are in water, so they're going to take on a lot of water, so they have to get rid of that excess water, and they're also going to get rid of their waste at the same time. 
The next structure evolutionarily that we see um, appears in some terrestrial, so remember that means land, and aquatic, which means water, invertebrates. And these are the annelids, uh, like the earthworms, and mollusks, clams, oysters in the water, and snails, both aquatic and terrestrial. They produce urine in structures called nephridia. Now urine is that ammonia that's broken down into a less harmful compound and then um, added to water. Okay, so these guys will use nephridia. Now if we can see from this picture, they're a lot more complex than what those little flame cells were. So there's lots of these little loops in the nephridia and that's going to help the body to reabsorb some of the solutes like the water and the iron and um, salts that are in the blood and need to be in there allow them to reabsorb those back into the bloodstream but eliminate the wastes okay and they do have these little external pores that they will eliminate their wastes from. Now this again remember is cellular waste because like uh, an earthworm also has an anus at the other end for eliminating solid waste from the digestive tract. Now we get to the funny ones. This is actually said malpigian tubules and these are found in insects and arachnids mostly. They look kind of like this. There's a little tube here that comes off of the gut and there are these little tubes that absorb solutes, water, and waste, so the cellular waste products. Now, the difference here is that these wastes are going to be added to the digestive waste and then released as a solid compound. So this will come out of the rectum of the insect. Okay, so it'll be added into the intestines and then they will essentially poop it out. Okay, so now let's talk about the fish. Now we're getting to the vertebrates and the higher organisms that have evolved structures called kidneys. Kidneys are very important to help in water balance. Okay. So fish are unique. They're, they're great. They're, um, they have some special problems. Since they are vertebrates, they are more evolved, and they're also aquatic. I'm hoping you knew that fish lived in water. One second. Okay, so fish have kidneys to separate waste and excess water from the blood to form urine. Now, here's a picture of a dissected fish for those uh, fishermen out there. I'm sure you've seen this many times. But there's usually an organ right here. It's um, like an oval organ, and it's filled with air, and that's their swim bladder, which helps the fish move up and down inside the water column. But they took that out so that you could see the long, thin kidneys up here. So let's talk about some freshwater animals first. So now remember that simpler aquatic organisms lose ammonia and maintain balance through the diffusion, so that natural process across their skin. Okay. We're talking about complex organisms now like fish and some amphibians, and they can eliminate some of the ammonia, their cellular waste product, across their gills. The problem is freshwater fish take in too much water and need to get rid of the excess water. Because they are in what's called a hypotonic solution, their bodies have more ions, like salt, than the surrounding water. So water is going to move where there's a lot of ions or salt, so it moves into their body and it causes them to swell, like this fish. Okay, so. If they didn't have a way to get rid of that excess water, the fish would explode. Now, saltwater fish have just the opposite problem of freshwater fish. They live in what's known as a hypertonic solution. Their bodies have less ions or salt than the surrounding water. They live in salt water. So the body water leaves them, and they need a way to keep from drying out. So what happens with saltwater fish is they actually produce very concentrated urine and they drink lots of water and actively pump the salt out through their gills. So they do excrete some urine and a little bit of water with that, but they try to conserve as much water as they possibly can and they drink, 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 drink and get rid of the salts. 
But the, see, the problem is that all organisms actually need to strive to maintain a balance, and that's why we have kidneys, that's why we have these structures, and that's why we need to talk about this. We need to have a balance with our environment. That perfect balance is in an isotonic solution, and that's when the cells are perfectly normal, they have enough water, and there's no problems. That hypertonic solution, like with the saltwater fish, would be where the cells shrivel up because they lose water, and hypotonic would be the cells explode because they gain too much water. Okay, now let's get to the birds and reptiles. Birds and reptiles do have kidneys. They're very good at conserving water, however. What they do is they excrete their, or convert, excuse me, their ammonia to a substance called uric acid. We all know what uric acid looks like. It's the sticky white compound that's found on all of our cars every once in a while, and trees, and sidewalks, and driveways. Okay, here's some bird doo-doo right here. Now, what happens with the birds and the reptiles is, again, just like with the insects, this ammonia in, in the form of uric acid is added to the digestive waste products, so from feeding and digestion, the, the food that is not digested. Okay. So it's added to that, and then it's eliminated through a structure called the cloaca. Okay, so here's a bird that is releasing waste, both digestive and cellular, through its cloaca. And this is the cloaca down here. Both males and females have cloaca and their large openings. And there are some differences, and they still do have urogenital structures, and we'll talk about that when we get to reproduction. But this is where the cloaca is. And then finally we get to the mammals and some amphibians. Now these are the most advanced organisms and we have kidneys. We actually convert ammonia to a product called or a compound called urea which is water soluble which means it dissolves in the water. And we're able to add lots of water to form urine which is why it's really really important to drink enough water every day. This is also why you notice that if you don't drink enough water your urine will be darker in color and uh, smell worse than if you drink lots of water. So the more water you drink, the better it is for your kidneys so they can help filter your blood. So all of these cellular waste products are carried in our blood and they're picked up in our blood and then our blood goes through our kidneys, like right here, okay? And when it's going through the kidneys, the kidneys are filtering out the blood. So if you ever heard of anybody being on dialysis, this is why they're on dialysis, because their kidneys have stopped functioning. And so what they need to do is go in a couple times a week and have their blood filtered, because if they have a buildup of the, this urea in their bloodstream, it actually can kill you. Because remember, ammonia is toxic, and even if um, we have too much in the form of urea, it's still going to be toxic. So people that have kidney failure need to go in for dialysis to keep their blood filtered. And then just as a reminder that all organisms, all mammals urinate, whether it's a cow, a bear, a dog, we all have kidneys. And they all look very similar in structure with blood vessels running to them. The blood is pumped into the kidney when, where we have these little filters that will um, filter out all of the bad waste products and go into the um, urinary system and then come out. In conclusion, let's see, we've talked about diffusion in the simpler organisms. We've talked about structures like flame cells, nephridia, um, malpighian tubules, and kidneys in the higher organisms. And we've talked about water balance. Ex excretory sorry, it's kind of hard to say, systems are extremely important in maintaining the proper balance of water in the blood and salts and other compounds okay, and eliminating those waste products. Now remember, these waste products are cellular waste products. There are some limitations, however, vertebrate kidneys cannot excrete concentrated salt. So too much salt would overwhelm the kidneys and the animal dies of dehydration while they continue to drink. So if you've ever heard of the being stranded out on the ocean and there's 
surrounded by tons of water, why do they die? Because our kidneys become overwhelmed and they cannot handle it and they will actually die of dehydration and their body will shut down and they will die. I hope you enjoyed this lecture on excretion and have a wonderful day.